you're a heart attack waiting to happen. You're decidedly heavier than you should be. Your blood pressure is higher than it should be. You've got high cholesterol and your triglycerides are high. Ouch. Everyone wants you to follow a low-fat diet. Well, almost everyone. There are voices in the wilderness proclaiming the way to better cardiovascular health is to dump the carbs and embrace the fats, specifically saturated fats. I'm one of those voices. I give the advice to anyone with health troubles, but I know for many people it takes a giant leap of faith to embrace saturated fat. The reason it's so difficult to follow this advice is for years we've been told saturated fats cause heart disease. Making the shift isn't easy. For many people the idea of embracing saturated fats is too left of center to adopt so they maintain the status quo. There are a few people who make an attempt to make the shift. Unfortunately, they often adopt only half of the idea. They cut the carbs a little or a lot, but instead of switching in saturated fat, they switch in unsaturated fats, especially seed oils. Now, seed oils are fat, but they're not considered to be saturated fat, and biochemically speaking, they're very different from saturated fats. It is saturated fats, the meat, eggs, cream, butter, that are the key to heart health. Fear keeps many people locked in old dietary habits. What if I'm wrong? If I'm wrong, you're a goner. I get it. This is why I wanted to share with you a research study from Ohio State University. This study tested out two diabolically opposed dietary approaches and everything in between and 16 people with metabolic syndrome. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we vicariously try out all the dietary options to see what works best for folks with metabolic syndrome. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster helping you battle sugar gremlins, heifalumps and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, what makes this study particularly valuable is each person experienced a spectrum of diets. In this program, the ratio of saturated fat to carbs was modified every three weeks for six months, and the calorie count was kept constant. To make it easy to stick with a program, the food was all prepared in the science lab's kitchen. What a pleasure. No cooking, no dishes for six months. They started off on a very low carb, high saturated fat diet consisting of 47 grams of carbs with 84 grams of fat, transitioning in a stepwise fashion all the way down to a high carb, low saturated fat diet composed of 346 grams of carb a day with 32 grams of saturated fat per day. Along the way, everything was checked. The usual stuff like weight, blood pressure, glucose levels, and fatty acid profiles. Now, this was more than just checking cholesterol levels in the blood. This was looking at which fats were in the blood. Now, one of the fatty acids associated with health troubles is palmitoleic acid. It's a 16 carbon fatty acid with a single double bond at the seventh carbon, making it an omega-7. It can be eaten, but it is primarily homemade, which makes it a good marker to assess body chemistry. It's consistently up in people with metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes. The researchers found the more carbs eaten, the higher the levels of palmitoleic acid. Ironically, when the same people ate lots of saturated fat, the level of this bad boy was at its lowest. This can be seen in this graph. The line at zero represents the level of palmitoleic acid at baseline, that is before any dieting happened. The lower the carbs in the diet, the lower its level. The effect was more pronounced in some people than others, but pretty consistent. Now, the focus in this study was on the lipid profile, but the usual things measured by doctors also showed improvements 
on the lower carb diet. Here is a plot of the HOMA levels. This is a number that estimates the level of insulin resistance. Going low carb brought a very rapid improvement. Now, logic says eating lots of fat will cause fat levels to be high. But biochemistry is not always logical. This study demonstrates when you fuel yourself using saturated fats, your body uses them up. As long as you don't eat too much, they don't get stored. But when you primarily fuel yourself with carbs, even if you're not eating too much, your body goes into storage mode and it stores the carbs as fat. The bad fat. The fat that is associated with metabolic troubles. Aish. So, if you're a heart attack waiting to happen, the smart move is to embrace saturated fat, while at the same time limiting your consumption of carbs. I know it's radical, but biochemically speaking, it's the right thing to do. To learn more about the Candy Floss system, download the Willpower Report. It's free and begin the journey today to creating better body chemistry and better health. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website to book a one-on-one -on -one health conversation or enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. Know someone who's afraid of saturated fat? Share this video with them so they realize that the fats causing all the trouble are homemade, not dietary. And if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.